Okay. I believe we are live. Are let's you ready, go. Rock? I'm ready. Let's go, man. Okay, let's do it. On today's episode of Playing Small is Cancelled, we have a very exclusive treat. At age 19, he built and then sold a biotech software company. At age 22, he was a venture capitalist raising 500000 to $15 million. He now runs a YouTube channel for entrepreneurs with millions of subscribers, has written a plethora of books, and speaks globally, no big deal. His ability to inspire others is second to none, and he wants to solve the world's biggest problem, that people just don't believe in themselves enough. In a world where extroversion often introverts everywhere, starting with a simple idea to empower and inspire entrepreneurs, he faced his own shyness head on, embarking on a journey of personal growth and discovery. He's just a juggernaut in all facets of life and a terrific husband and father. Please welcome the dynamic, compelling, and abundant, the handsome and optimistic Evan Carmichael. How let's you doing? Go. Let's, let's go, Craig. Great to be here. You're, you're looking a little more buff since the last time I saw you, but what's been going on? You know what? Um, I did have three weeks off from running because I had a little bit of a, of a health situation. It turned out to be okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. But during that three weeks, I wasn't running, which, you know, it's a lot of calories. And I was just going upstairs and, and lifting weights. Probably the universe telling me to switch up the routine a little bit. So I might have gained a couple, but thank you for noticing. Yeah, you're looking, or or you're just wearing a short That's sleeve shirt compared to last time. I don't know, but you're looking good. And I, uh, usually, I usually don't wear uh, short sleeve shirts, if I'm being honest. Okay, like it's just, he's bringing it out just for episode six here on LinkedIn. Let's go. That's it. And thank you for, for coming today. Uh, first of all, I love you. Every time we get together, it's great. But we got a new show on a new platform, Playing Small is Canceled. Without further ado, when you hear that that name, Playing Small is Canceled, what does that mean to you, Ev? You know what? It's actually funny because uh, uh, we we canceled this show, and I think we gave your team a heart attack because we got an, we got an update to say playing small is canceled thinking that this interview was canceled to think oh we're gonna we'll do it again some other time <laughs> <laughs> is that a story? Team, yeah i think someone on your team then wrote like hey is this off like oh shoot no 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 it's on it's just the show call is that called is unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> i did not know that that's so funny that's uh funny. no but i love it i mean i i think i think you're you're tapping into the culture of so many people trying to cancel each other. And like you say, one small thing and everybody's trying to get you canceled uh, and you're flipping it in, in classic Craig style into a positive to say, okay, if we're going to cancel something, let's cancel playing small. And so uh, I think people play small by default. I think we're scared by default. I think we listen to other people's opinions too much by default. And uh, if you've got a dream for yourself that you have to cancel that small that small conversation in your head that's telling you all the reasons why you can't do it, you can't get started. So, yeah, man, it's an honor to be here on your show. Yeah, first of all, uh, I love you. In case I didn't tell you that a hundred times already. I love that story that you thought it was canceled. That's unbelievable. Um, in regards to what you just said, I, I totally agree. I think most people don't push past their perceived capabilities because of the battle in their head with the opponent, the ego, whatever it is. What is that voice? Like, where does that come from? Do you think? Um, honestly, I think it's I think it's put there. I think it's I think it's the voice of your your scared parents telling you to be safe. You know, like when when you're a kid, everything is possible. What What did you want to be when you were a kid, Craig? See that that's the interesting question. I didn't I don't really know when I was growing up, which is why it probably took me till thirty five to really find my. You shrine. had no you had no you don't want to be as an astronaut or a baseball player or nothing. You know what if you're asking me like a hundred like if I had to choose something, I wanted to do something with movies. I was always infatuated with like directing, and I just thought that was so cool. But I didn't necessarily want to like be all in, and that I I really didn't figure it all out until later in life. Well, but this is all the point. Like we don't you, you're not supposed to have it figured out. You're in dreaming mode, so. I mean, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a baseball player in in the season because uh, Kelly Gruber was my favorite player of all time, third baseman for the Toronto Blue Jays. So I wanted to be a baseball player during the during the season and a police officer in the off season. That really? was I was like, of course that's possible. Even though like, who's done that? Nobody, right? But but I was gonna do that because 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 why not? Because of, of course that's possible. Because when you're a kid, everything is possible. Correct. And then what ends up happening is it gets it gets put in you by your family, society, media, your school, et cetera, that that's that that's what you want to be. You can't do that. What single baseball player? First of all, you're never going to make it as a baseball player. 
because the odds are ridiculously low. And then tell me one baseball player who's ever been also a police officer in the off season, right? Like that's not going to happen for you, Carmichael. And uh, the dreams get squashed out of us. And so uh, I don't think that that's your voice. I think that voice that's telling you that you can't do it is actually not your voice. Your voice is telling you that you're awesome and you're amazing. You can do whatever you want to do. It's the collective voice of society and pressures put on us that telling us that, no, we can't do this because we might fail and we might look bad and people might judge us. Yeah, beautifully said. I think there's also another whisper that's probably the, the whisper of the soul that like very like slightly tells you what you should actually do. In regards to that voice, I think it's a negative force with a positive purpose because when you do hear, no, you shouldn't do that or no, you shouldn't change that or who are you? That's probably an indication that if you were to lower the shoulder and push past that, on the other side of that would be a, a massive level of expansion for you. Would you agree? It, it's other people putting their insecurities on you. Mm. And it's usually out of love. Like if, if your mom told you that you should go do blank, a lot of times it's our parents telling us that we should go do something. Else. It's not that they don't, it's not that they hate you. Like probably, I mean, your mom probably loves you. <laughs> Hopefully, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there's some that don't, but like your mom, you know, for anybody watching, listening, your mom probably loves you. So why would someone who loves you tell you advice that isn't uh, necessarily the best for you or is keeping you safe and small? Well, it's because they wouldn't do it. They're afraid, but they love you. This is actually them showing love. And so the willingness to go uh, against that, of the, the opinions of people that we respect, uh, where there even may be some expectations is really, really hard. Um, I think of um, Akio Morita, who started Sony, and he came from a long line of sake brewers in Japan. And I forget how many generations, like 12 or 14 generations of sake brewers. And the oldest son was supposed to take over. And that's what that's that was his destiny. He was the oldest son. He was supposed to take over. This is what's happened for however many generations. And so he's going to take over, except he didn't want to take over. He wanted to do something different. He wanted to start a technology company. It's like, what are you talking about? You can't. And especially in Japan, where it's very uh, do than what the culture says to do. And he had the courage to say, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start this company and we're going to call it Sony. And ended up building a giant business uh, all because he had the courage to not listen to the, you know, what his family and, and society wanted him to do. And that requires a lot of courage. And the great part about this is now it's, it's never been more possible. Mm. When he started Sony was, it was actually impossible. Like he defied the odds and made it possible, but it was really, really, really hard now to start a business and have success is so much easier than ever. If you want to be a published author, I see I see a new book there behind you on the wall. I love it. It's great. Uh, it's easier than ever. You want to start a show? It's easier than ever, and it's only becoming easier. So the excuses are being sucked away from us, and that if you've got a dream, you need to go chase it down. That was really beautiful, brother. No surprise there, but I, I never like articulated that because of all the resources that we have now the excuses are really diminishing. So now it's really on you to cultivate that 20 seconds of courage and lean in. A big part of your ethos and your brand is believe. What do you want people to believe in? Themselves to do the next thing. Like I think that the world's biggest problem is people don't believe in themselves enough. And so, you know, cancer. Well, I think cancer should have been solved by now. The woman who solves cancer should have solved it by now, but she's instead a, a manager in an accounting firm because she never believed in herself enough to go down that other path. Uh, and so if you want to improve your belief, you need to start surrounding yourself with people who make you feel that on a consistent basis. So if you're watching this show, episode six of uh, LinkedIn Live with Craig Siegel, awesome. If this is doing anything for you, Hey, give, give Craig a follow, give him a little recommendation on LinkedIn too. that those uh, always help and, and pay attention to future shows, right? Because if you surround yourself, even virtually with people who make you feel better, who make you have more belief in yourself, that has this ripple effect out for the rest of your day. So the challenge, I think for a lot of people watching, if you're, if you're, if you're a fan of Craig Siegel, you're probably the most ambitious person in your circle. Mm. 
you're probably the one who's pouring into other people. You're the one helping others. You're the one encouraging them to go do stuff like you. That's who Craig tends to attract in his community. That's and that's right. awesome. And keep doing that. But who's pushing you to do more? And you probably don't know somebody in your circle who's pushing you to do more. And Craig's not coming over every week, you know, <laughs> waking you up in the morning to say, hey, <laughs> get out of bed. We got work to do. Let's go change some lives. But he could be through YouTube, through LinkedIn, through his shows. I mean, Craig makes a lot of content. And since he entered the game, he's been one of the most consistent people that I've seen on making content come from the guy who like hasn't missed a, a video upload in over a decade. So Craig's he's on his way. He's making it happen. I received that. Thank you. But whether it's Craig or whoever, whoever you look up to and, uh, and respect, you could be around them every day through their videos, through their books, through their podcasts. And no matter how great a day you have today, tomorrow you're waking up and, it, and it, you're starting over. You need the you need the daily reminder. And so you can be more intentional with what you're feeding into your brain. Most people wake up and they start scrolling and there's no intentionality behind it. How much time have you wasted on Instagram just scrolling through content and it's not feeding you and, and YouTube and other platforms, LinkedIn, but you could be intentional with who you follow and what you consume, especially at the start of the day, because if you start your day consuming the thing that makes you feel more belief, more confident, more bold, that's going to change the direction of that day. And you do that consistently, it's going to change the direction of your life. This is unbelievable. Straight up. And I agree. It's like, you know, morning routines. I know it's, it's a whole different conversation. People have these 7,500 things that they do. For me, if I just want to keep it real simple with you, because you just nailed it. It's so important for me to wake up a little bit earlier than I probably have to, to use that time to really charge up for the day. Because I'm constantly pouring out and, you know, giving myself to everybody and so forth that I need to make sure that I'm 100% to at least start the day. Because by the end, I'm probably a little bit drained. And so that's the first thing I do is personal development. Sometimes I think people forget that the word development is in that, is in that phrase and so forth. So I'm developing myself and learning and growing, putting myself in, in a good vibration and so forth. And you write, sometimes, I think Uncle Dave says, the simplest things to do are also the simplest not to do. Something so simple like setting the tone in the morning can really create the trajectory for the rest of your entire day. I like that you called him Uncle Dave. I haven't heard that one yet. Is that is that is that passing around now? Is he Uncle Dave? I don't know. He's like my uncle, I feel like. But maybe right. he Dave, Dave Meltzer for everybody who's uh, who may not be familiar. But Uncle Dave, yeah. I like it. I, might, I called him my spirit animal. So <laughs> 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 I guess we get uh, we have a, uh, a lot of different names for for Dave, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's figuring out what works for you. And so the morning routine, definitely a part of it. Um, just before we went live, I, I was chatting with your producer, Joseph, and he was asking me about my day. And I said, well, it's a, it's a Thursday when we're recording this and my Thursdays are packed with just podcast, podcast, interview, hang. It's like the whole, I do everything on a Thursday that's public facing because I'm naturally an introvert. And so I need to build up towards extrovert day. And so he asked me, what do you do in between the podcast when you have, you have a five minute break between each show? It's like, do you listen to music? Do you unwind? Do you relax? He's like, no, I, I actually don't like that because I, I need to stay in the same zone because I'll default back to introvert mode. And then you're going to get a much more boring version of Evan where the, the Evan you're getting now is a result of like six other shows that I've already done before here. And so That's the right. energy just keeps on going. And so it's understanding who you are and what you need. And so yeah. for you, like you need to wake up a little bit earlier than you should because that you need to build yourself up to be able to handle the day and all the people asking you things and all the, yeah. the giving you're going to do. And if you don't, if you don't build that muscle, you're not going to give as much and then you're not going to contribute. You're not going to grow. You're not all the things that matter to you. Yeah. Um, and so like anytime if you're waking up and you're not feeling uh, motivated, that's OK. Like, welcome to being a human. I didn't wake up today and be like. I'm going to change the world today. It's going to be amazing. Right? <laughs> so, but, but the difference is we create habits and routines that put us in a better emotional state. I woke up. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what I'm doing today. I want to be, I want to sleep some more. I wish I had slept longer. My aura ring tells me how much sleep I had last night. And Same. then I, I will start my day by watching a video of somebody that inspires me. I like, I like seeing it. So I need a visual. The audio alone is not enough for me. 
And then I put that into part of my daily routine. And if I see another resource, another channel, something else that I watched one thing, like if you watched one Craig video and it, and it made you feel on fire, cool. Hey, subscribe to him, watch more content, put that as part of your daily routine. He's got, I don't know how many thousands of videos by now he's, he's been making content consistently for a while that you could start every day for the next year with Craig and not run out of new content. Um, we're just not intentional enough. We wake up like it's an accident and we start scrolling our, through our phone and all of a sudden 45 minutes have gone by and you're still sitting on the toilet. Like we got to start <laughs> being more intentional with our life, with our day, because again, like we talked about before, it's never been easier to be able to go off and accomplish your dream, but you still have to go off and do the work. Yeah, this is, um, this is straight up gold. Um, intentional is such a good word. And I encourage everybody listening that will catch a replay to live your life with intentionality and not leave things up to chance. Uh, I want to ask you two things real quick. Before you mentioned the word bold, like when you listen to something in the morning, you start your day off and you become more bold. I think that's such an awesome trait to possess and it may be a muscle to flex. When you say that, what does that mean to you to be more bold? Yeah, I definitely look at it as a muscle more than a trait. Um, personally, I don't, I don't think I'm bold enough. Um, it's why I try to surround myself with people who are doing bold things so that it, it, I get to leech off of some of their boldness and it gives me the courage to go off and do something more. Um, imagine what the 10x version of you would be doing. Like, what, is, what are you doing right now? And then what does that 10x version of you look like? What are you working on? What, if, like, if you, it's the question, like, if you knew you couldn't fail, what, what would you be doing? And, and that's, um, that's a sign of like the direction you need to be going in. And if, if nothing comes to mind, if you can't think of anything, like, I don't know what I'd be doing if I was 10x bigger. Okay, look to who you're jealous of. Uh, Mel Robbins liked to say that uh, jealousy is a directional signal. And I loved it when she said that. Is there somebody you're jealous of? Like if you're looking at Craig and you're jealous of him, not that you want him, you, you want him to do poorly. You're not cheering against him. We're not trying to tear somebody down, down. but like there's something you like about him. I'm jealous of Craig. Well, why is it? Why are you jealous of Craig? And try to identify that. Okay, curious. He's been working out and he's like mega buff right now. Is it because <laughs> he's on a, he's on all these platforms and making content? It's because he brings on great guests, because he's an author, because he just got started. Like, what is the thing about Craig? that makes you jealous. And that's a sign that you want that in your life too. And the world's abundant. I mean, and that's a, I know a constant theme through all of Craig's content, just talking about the world being abundant. You're like you winning is not taken away from somebody else. But if you find somebody, we often as entrepreneurs think, oh, jealousy is a bad thing and I shouldn't be jealous. I should want people to win and yes, but use it as a directional signal that if you see something that you're jealous of, what is it about that thing? Because you want more of that in your life. That is your, that is your goal. That is, your, um, that is the history that you can create for yourself. But sometimes we can't find it just by thinking positive. Sometimes we got to go to the jealousy side of the equation to figure out where it is that we want to go. I love this. I love the quote that you mentioned by Mel. I, there's another quote that I really like. It's pretty much the same thing. Triggers, your triggers are an invitation to mastery. Get curious about why you're being triggered. Why are you jealous? Get curious about that. Yeah. I love that too. It's great. Who said that? Craig Siegel? Um, I can't take credit for it. Okay. I heard it well, somewhere, recently, but it's yours now. I'll give you credit okay. until until you tell me who who, who said it. <laughs> Done. Done. Ev, what are you most excited about right now? You have so many things going on. What are you most jazzed about? I'm here talking to you, man, on the new show. This is great. Um I'm, I'm very present minded focused. So somebody asked me like, how much time do you spend thinking about the past, present, future? I said, man, past 0%. Like, I don't even know what I had for breakfast today. I don't, I don't think backwards. I'm 85% present, 15% future. I'm excited about being here on the new show. I'm excited you're doing LinkedIn live. I'm excited to test out something new with Craig. It's like, it, this is, this is it. And, um, if I think about the 50% future, I'm working on the YouTube channel. I'm building out some um, pretty cool software to help you uh, split test your thumbnails and get better results from your YouTube channel. Um, we've got our Movement Makers program where we're training thought leaders how to build their brand and make more money from their content. Uh, but most often, it's like it's it's awesome to see you again. We catch up, like Craig and I catch up by making content. 
sure. that's pretty much how it is and that's how it is for like a lot of a lot of uh i'm not really the hey how you doing like texting oh, people yeah, yeah and there's this great um i thought there was something wrong with me it's like well all these people are so great at maintaining friendships and talking to people and it's like i don't want to know you know how your weekend was like i don't that's not really what i typically do and i thought i was weird and then we did a um top 10 video on Shah Rukh Khan. I don't know if you know Shah Rukh Khan. No. He's like um the Tom Cruise of Bollywood. Okay. Like one of the most well-known Indian actors, the, the king of Bollywood. Um and he had this great line that I really connected with where he said, I connect with people through the work. And where his um when people were doing a movie, he was hanging out with them, but then when the movie was done, they're like, "Hey, come over and let's do some barbecuing and and he's like, "No, I don't want to I don't want to hang out with you. Uh, I love you. I love you. But I don't want to just hang out and do a barbecue. I connect with people through the work. And for whatever reason, that just made me feel less weird and more normal, or at least more accepted, um, that how I usually connect with people is through the work. Yeah. Um, so I don't hop on long phone calls and just chat with people. But we're doing a LinkedIn Live with Craig Siegel. Let's go. I'm down. <laughs> I love that you just two things real quick. Someone in our community, when you came in, membership really inspired them, and they just wrote in the chats. I'm working on my YouTube channel because of you, Evan. So I want to acknowledge you for that. And I heard a quote also recently last week. I was in Arizona, Dean Grazio, seeing them, and he said something that really stuck out and reminded me of what you just said, like connecting through the work. He said, instead of trying to find work-life balance, let's create work-life integration. And I just thought that really resonated. Yeah, I struggle. When people ask me about work-life balance, I really struggle with that. Same as I say, what does your work life balance look like? It was like, well, I don't know. Is this work? Like, what are we doing right now? Right. It's not work for me. I mean, I see it in my calendar and I don't look at Craig Siegel live on LinkedIn as work. It's like, this is going to be awesome. Pleasure. <laughs> and, and, but that's like that. What, so what is work? It's, it's for me, it's all just life. And yes, I mean, obviously, I need, I don't want to only be doing podcasts with people and I don't, want to but i also don't want to only be sleeping and i don't want to only be spending time with my wife or only being spend time with my son and so obviously all those things have to get mixed together but i just don't see it as there's work and then there's life there's just life that's it. and you get to do whatever you want with your life so make it count that's it. so we drop the mic uh we'll get you out of here in a little rapid fire maybe one or two word answers are you ready for me yes Favorite movie? Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Love you. Your last meal on earth would be? Um, some kind of pizza. Mm, nice. Okay. Your favorite guilty pleasure? League of Legends. Mm, nice. Favorite workout? Favorite workout? Uh, rucksacking while watching a video the best answers ever uh favorite book favorite book uh i mean i would say one of my own but that's a little too uh promotional uh favorite book favorite book of the year i would say is uh uh 10x is easier than 2x okay and last one very very deep stuff your favorite musician Ooh, favorite <laughs> musician <laughs> Man, I have some weird stuff on my playlist. Same. Favorite musician. Who? Um, Told you it's going to be tough. That's a tough one. I like different songs from different people. Same. Uh, but why don't we throw out Eminem? Done. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with Eminem. For our community, how can they get involved? They can the support. You're making a difference even from our community, just doing YouTube and so forth. How can everybody get involved right now? Uh, I mean, I'm Evan Carmack on most platforms. Best thing you can do, though, is uh, honestly support the show. I mean, any anytime somebody's starting something new, it's always great to give them some love and support. This is episode six for Craig. So if it meant something to you, leave a comment, let people know, share it, give him a recommendation. He's trying to build up his LinkedIn uh, community. So show him that it's worth doing this. Because if you guys aren't showing up and watching and commenting, Craig's going to move on somewhere else. So let's keep him here. I love it. I love you, brother. Uh, your best is yet to come. So grateful for our friendship. Thank you so much for stopping by today and dropping these priceless, juicy nuggets. Thank you, man.